In this video I'll have a quick look at how Poland became independent and the incidents leading up to this event. Unlike with other countries which were decolonized, the exact moment or day of Poland becoming independent is not clear. And the date of 11th of November has been given for reasons which we shall see. Now while I'm doing this video, I'm going to talk and I'll show you some scenes from the 100th anniversary celebrations as well as some other shots around Warsaw, as well as some historic photographs which I have in my collection and which have at some time appeared on my History Facebook page. In the 18th century, Poland was divided by Russia, Prussia and Austria in three partitions with the lion's share going to Russia. A number of revolts happened in the 19th century against Russian rule, all of which were crushed. In 1914, World War I started and by the end of 1916, almost all of what had been Russian Poland was captured by the Germans and Austrians. The Kaiser's government wanted to annex a large part of this land, but at the same time, aware of the need for troops after the horrendous losses of the war, believed that by getting Poles on their side, it could get some extra help. Whereas Russia was on the brink of revolution, I don't think that this was fully appreciated at the time. So at a meeting in Pristina in October 1916, the German-Austrian governments agreed between themselves to move forward with the creation of a Polish state. At the time, the Germans ruled from Warsaw and the Austrians from Lublin. Both, of course, were military governments. Although parts of what could be termed the Polish leadership did not want to deal with the Central Powers, Kaiser Wilhelm II and Chancellor Theodor von bettmann holweg met with a Polish delegation and the deal was thrashed out. On the 5th of November 1916, the German military governor, Colonel General Hans von Bessele, promised that a Polish state would be created without specifying any Pol future Polish ruler or how it would be ruled or where the borders may be. I think that what they had in mind was sort of putting in a, a prince or something in a way that it had happened in the Balkans in the uh, 19th century. Nonetheless, the uh, uh, Colonel General von Bessler had the royal castle in Warsaw decked out with Polish flags for the first time since 1831. The Austrian governor, General Cook, issued a similar proclamation in Lublin and here we have a picture of the German and Austrian military leadership in Lublin in December 1916. And if you recognize the place the photograph was taken, write it down below. Now, surprise, surprise, as soon as this was done, the German military government went on a recruitment campaign. Who wants to join the Polish army as part of the Central Powers? On 14th of January 1917, a provisional government consisting of 15 members chosen by the German and 10 by the Austrian authorities came into being. Now these people, all nobles or the likes, uh, the sort of people that the aristocrats in Germany could identify with and uh, they were all sort, of, like one of us so to speak, yeah, one of the, one of the, the lads, one of the boys. Um, these, uh, this the provisional government had a limited amount of local uh, authority, um, but it did have some authority and what's important is it actually did control the courts as well as the education system. Now only eight days later on the 22nd of January 1917, US President Woodrow Wilson announced his 14 points, one of which was the independence of Poland. Now if this didn't actually mean much, I don't think the US was uh, regarded by anybody as a superpower or maybe even not a power at the time. Uh, no one could tell that the US was going to enter the war, uh, of course it did uh, uh, three months later, and uh, no one could even know what the effect would be of US troops uh, in that war. Of course this uh, became important later. Whereas the officer corps of the new Polish army started to come together in December 1916, it hit problems with recruitment. Poles from the pre-war borders of Austria had to join the army of the dual monarchy. The, um, those that did join the uh, new Polish army were asked to take an oath of allegiance 
which emphasized the alliance with Germany and Austria. A number of people refused to take the oath, and amongst them was the head of the new army, Josef Pilsudski, and his second in command, Kazimierz Sosankowski, who, as a result, were arrested and imprisoned in Germany. Those troops that did take the oath were sent to the Eastern Front in August 1917. In September 1917, a Regency Council was formed and took over as a provisional government on the 15th of October 1917. Once more, with people that the aristocrats could relate to, which included the Archbishop of Warsaw and Józef Ostrowski, who was a major landowner and who had been the leading Polish member of parliament in the Russian Duma. Of course, the Russian Duma didn't have a uh, great deal of power uh, in the Tsarist system. However, it existed, which I suppose is better than uh, nothing. Now, whereas the German military was still effectively in control, even the German Reichstag called in March 1918 for the establishment of a full civil administration in uh, what is or what became Poland, Lithuania and Latvia. However, the German parliament, like the aforementioned Russian parliament, didn't have much power and it didn't have the power to grant uh, a full civil administration to uh, these uh, countries which were under military occupation or military rule. Although Russia was defeated and the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk was signed, Germany collapsed in 1918 on the Western Front. Uh, the Germany sought a deal based on the 14 points which the new German Chancellor, Prince Max of Baden, accepted on the 3rd of October 1918. On the 6th of October 1918, the German military government completely handed over administration to Polish civil servants. So effectively, the following day, Poles were in charge. On the 23rd of October 1918, the German military government transferred command to the, uh, of the Polish forces over to the Regency Council. So we can say that on this date there is now a Polish army of sorts which is nominally independent. Meanwhile, in Lublin, a provisional People's Republic was declared. The name sounds somewhat, somewhat communist. However, I don't think its leader, Ignacy Daszynski, shared the ideas of uh, uh, the, the government uh, that was then in Moscow. Uh, the Warsaw government re requested the release of uh, Piłsudski, Josef Piłsudski, who arrived in Warsaw on 10th of November 1918 from the prison in Magdeburg, and the following day Germany signed the armistice, ending the war. The leadership of Piłsudski was acceptable to both the Regency Council and Daszynski. Piłsudski was named as the head of the army and at the same time the Germans began to withdraw their armed forces. Uh, Warsaw and Poznan garrisons were disarmed on that day, the, the 11th of uh, November 1918. Later the Second Polish Republic chose the 11th of November as the day of effective independence whilst accepting that 7th of October was the date independence was declared. In a way declared! Now here we have a poster announcing what's going to be happening during the 15th anniversary of independence in 1933. Nonetheless, another date could have been chosen, such as, for example, the 12th of November when Piłsudski was entrusted with creating a national government, or perhaps the 16th of November, the date that uh, Piłsudski declared independence by sending a telegram informing the leaders of other countries that an independent Polish state had been created. Poland was thus born, but its borders had yet to be defined, and I think that that's something worth looking at in another view, particularly as there is not much information on the, uh, uh, the Polish-Bolshevik war and um, I think I will have a uh, uh, go at that sometime in 
the future. Now, I, on my website, on my, on my YouTube site, I've got lots of information about uh, Polish history. It is mainly related to uh, things which occurred during the uh, Second World War, and I've got things um, to do with uh, what happened uh, in the 1980s, which is largely based on uh, my own experience when I talk, talk about what happened uh, in Gdansk uh, during martial law and after that. Uh, but um, unfortunately, a lot of stuff isn't particularly good. I mean, the, the filming, I mean, the information is okay, but the, the filming is not very good. And nowadays we've got uh, uh, YouTube allows us to put better stuff up. Well, I mean, I'm not suggesting that my, um, I could have done better before, but uh, certainly I could have got a better camera or something like that. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't. Um, and also I had this idea I had to sort of talk and walk at the same time, which... Uh, it's not very good because you forget things. But anyway, I have got a fair bit of information about uh, Polish history on my site and Polish travel as well, but also tourist videos uh, from uh, Poland. And uh, so you might want to have a look at them. And if you speak Polish, you might also want to have a look at my Polish language channel. Uh, but that's just about camper vans and motorhomes. So uh, if you're not interested in them, then it won't be interesting. Right, so. I shall try and do a little bit more on this subject at a later date. Sorry for the lack of details, I tried to get it all done in less than uh, 10 minutes, which I think I did, and I spent me another minute and a half talking about myself.